But Dorsa, oh, we have yes. a very, very special guest uh, uh, from uh, Chess by the Numbers. Ty has joined us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. I got to tell you up front, Ty, we've never met, but I've been exploiting you for uh, an entire week. I love your <laughs> site. I love your models and your way of writing and explaining to the audiences uh, the, uh, the winning percentages. And it's extraordinary that after a single half of play, this most eagerly anticipated event, it's a near 98% certainty, according to your model, that uh, Napo or Fabi will be the challenger. So my narrative from the very beginning of the tournament was that this is an unpredictable tournament. Just about anything could happen. Right. And I'm shocked that this happened. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Nice. I think we all feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, we all expected uh, the unexpected. And right. Someone's going to come out of nowhere, and instead just the two people that have won it before are running away with it. Yeah. Yeah. Dorsa, oh. questions for Ty. Please. One of my questions would be like, do you take like uh, the whole game? Like, uh, would you go over specific moves and compare them to maybe engine moves or the expected moves? Like, do you go move by move or do you go game by game? Result by my, result. My model is result by result. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've always kept the model as simple as I can because I want to make sure that people can understand where the numbers are coming from. Uh, my ultimate goal isn't necessarily to predict chess as perfectly as possible. I want to come close so that it means something, but I really want to provide that context for understanding as much as possible about what's going on in a tournament for the fans. So a simpler model makes that easier, I think. So I use just the player's ratings, uh, uh, live rating, and put a win, draw, and loss percentage on each game from and treat all the games as independent and just simulate out all the unplayed games in the tournament to see who won, simulate it again ad, ad nauseum until I have a large enough sample size to see who won the most of those simulations. Wonderful. All right, Ty, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up on our <laughs> screen uh, the uh, percentage where things stand after six rounds. And could oh. you explain to us why, even though there's only a half a point gap between Fabi and Jan, Jan is almost two to one favorite over Fabi at this exact moment. And they have to play, uh, they have a date with Destiny in round nine. That's going to be the huge game of the tournament. But so the reason wow. he's that big of a favorite is because he's got that half point lead. Um, one of the things I like about the model is it helps us figure out how important something like half a point is or isn't when it might not be completely intuitively clear. Right. And what the model is telling us is that a half point is more than it feels like. Even with seven rounds left, the fact is he's ahead. So Fabi has to outplay him in the second half. And in fact, if, if Fabi wants to win outright, he has to outplay Jan by a full point exactly. over the final seven games. Uh, if, they, if, if Fabi outplays him by half a point... They still have tie breaks, and if they play equal to each other through the final seven games, yawns through. So that's where that two-to-one edge comes from. Okay, Ty, this is not going to be intuitively obvious for our audience. In round seven, Fabi won, right? Yep. I know where you're going. And his percentage went down. <laughs> it did. Whereas Jan won, and as you would expect, his percentage went up, but went up tremendously. Explain why. Because of who they were playing. Uh, Fabi was supposed to have a good chance of winning that game. Against so, Timor. Again, yeah, he had white against the lowest rated player in the tournament. The model thought he was likely relatively likely to win that game. A draw is always the most likely result of a game, but he had good winning chances. Okay. So his expected score for the tournament didn't go up that much by winning. Right. Jan won a tough game as black. He improved his expected score by more. So he gained and extended his lead in that expected score at the end category. And all Fabi's win was enough to do was to keep pace. Gotcha. Uh, he, 
he did lose percentage even with a win. But keep in mind, if he had drawn that game, he would have dropped to like 16 percent. So the win was still way better than a draw would have been. It just wasn't good enough to actually improve his odds because the player ahead of him also won. Just okay. stuff. He won a, a and it still game. wasn't good enough. <laughs> what else did you want from the guy? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted him to see Jan lose. <laughs> there you go. That's you got to win your games. And we've he actually needs. seen that throughout the tournament. Welcome, tied to the conversation, where players go check out the other opponent's boards and they're disgusted by what <laughs> they saw. When Nepo checked out Favi's game against Ali Reza, and Favi already had an extra exchange. Nepo was cruising through Duda. He looks at the game and just makes a grimace, like, man, this guy's still on my heels. I can't <laughs> shake him off. And yeah. yes, absolutely. It does seem that Favi's win was important to keep pace, but Nepo's results, especially with Rapport, with the black pieces, just catapults him in the numbers. I mean, yeah, that's that's why uh, why Nepo's the two to one favorite on half a point. Like, to, if we wanted to go with an extremely impossible example, if they if Fabi could win his final seven games, we've seen him do it before, and it wouldn't be enough if Nepo won his last seven. Okay, they play each other, so technically that's not possible. Say they draw their game and win the, each win, etc. But the point is, Fabi can win as much as he wants, but as long as Nepo keeps winning, there's nothing he can do about it. Um, it's the thing about the round robin or the double round robin format. You only play your opponent in two. If you're neck and neck with one other player like this, you only play them twice and the other 12 games are against other players. And it's what you do against those other players that'll decide it. Wonderful. Ty, I, for, once again, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining us. And once again, I want to say how much I personally enjoy your site. I love it. I mean, wake up in the morning, I go. I like your writing style and uh, making it a very simple to understand. Uh, how can uh, the chess world support your efforts? Um, so I do have a PayPal donation link on my blog, uh, chessnumbers.wordpress.com, and has a, that link. I also have a Patreon page. I will admit I do not post any subscriber exclusive content. Mm -hmm. I intend to, but it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But it's still a way, uh, if, if you wanted to subscribe there just to support the work that I will keep doing, there's that. Other than that, read the blog, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I do a lot of stuff that's Twitter only for smaller tournaments. Okay. Uh, the candidates all write 1500 words every night and put out full articles and all the explanations. But for a lot of other tournaments, I'm still calculating odds and I'll just tweet the screenshots of those odds and leave it at that. So okay. following me on Twitter at chess numbers is a great place for a lot of my content that isn't anywhere else. And yeah, just following and supporting is I really appreciate it. It means I can't tell you how much it means to me to hear you say that you're reading reading the work. Uh, I've been following you for ages, <laughs> and you're just a huge inspiration for me. So I really appreciate it. And ages and ages and ages. <laughs> I get it. I get it, Ty. Thank you very much. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But thank you for all the good work, and um, well, really appreciate the question. Yeah, I was. We were wondering. Um, well, what are, what are your experiences with chess? Do you play regularly? I have been an on and off chess player my whole life. I've always loved the game, but whether or not I'm playing at all is sort of come in a couple waves. Uh, I've loved the game since I was seven. I inherited a huge chess book collection from my grandpa and taught myself to love the game from those books. I really never, I read them like novels. I never really like studied them with a board very much. So I didn't actually get that good, but I fell in love with the game. Uh, when I was 17, I found the concept of tournament chess for the first time, played for a couple, played a few tournaments over those couple years, then lost some interest, then came back in my late 20s and got involved in tournaments again. The last tournament I played was in 2014. I got my rating up over 1,500. Yes. And I actually pretty sure this summer I'm going to be back over the board for the first time again. Uh, I've been doing a lot of study at home over the last year or so, and I'm hoping that I've improved and that I can go prove it. <laughs> well, go get them, Tiger. And again, thank you so much for uh, joining the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you. Cheers. Nice, nice. That's chess by the numbers. Uh, 